three times? Yeah. Okay. It is. 
where the that's where the pilots learn to fly. That's how they build planes from what's and birds. Oh, I would I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bill, what are you doing over there? He's thinking it's still hurting now, like this man. Oh, yeah. From putting on the stretch, pressure on the strings. Mm -hmm. You want to hit with you? Yeah. I played hard on the bass that night. And I stopped it. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Brad Vince, I mean, with uh, Kevin. Yeah. He never wants to play. Oh, I, he was. We were walking out afterwards. No one's here, but he's still playing. He said, I said, I, I said I'm going. He said, no, one more, one more. <laughs> 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 he said, he something there. Yeah. That's, it's like every time I work with him. Uh -huh. When I play with him, he's like, let's, let's, let's go on. He's doing another thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like it. Him do that oh, that's great that he's that talented. Yeah, he is that talented, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I plus he knows all the words. Yeah, he knows all the words. Yeah. I gotta find out how this chords in. I want that here. This one. Because I have a sound system. Yeah. Oh, I can plug in right here. I mean, I have it. That, I don't know if I need it. It would make my fingers a lot easier, wouldn't it? I would have to. I see it. Yeah. I got it. I got both. Test one two, test, test, test one two. Test one two. This one. Thank <laughs> you. 
first first thing would be basketball. Boom. Next one. Good morning, everyone. Please join in singing our opening hymn, 582, Rain Down, and hopefully it doesn't rain, but we'll sing it anyway, <laughs> 582. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord's love and joy rain down upon you. I, I think of our dear friend Tony Rinaldo every time that, uh, every time the two stories about Tony Rinaldo. When we were building this place, how many of you knew Tony Rinaldo? So many of you. He was the, he was the, he was the attorney that was in charge of uh, uh, kind of zoning for the town of Amherst. I said, Tony, we're going to have a problem with the zoning board. Father... Anyway, so anyway, every time, every time we, every time we sang "Rain Down," he would, oh, I love that. So he would light up like a little, like a little kid, you know. So anyway, think of Tony today. Welcome to our our, our first communion class, right? This is what I think. Have a it's so exciting! So exciting! It's so exciting to, to have you all here. It's a very excited day. Uh, I didn't sleep well last night. I don't. I was maybe I was thinking of looking forward to the first communions or what or something. I never not sleep well, so uh, so last night I didn't. But it's all right. This, I'm so this is so exciting. I, this is like uh, the, the refreshment of being here now as we're slowly, slowly getting things back together. I think too slowly, but that's all right. I don't mean to judge. So uh, we're going to pray for Mary and Arthur Delman, for whom we offer Holy Mass today. We're going to pray. Uh, for our good friend Esther Mungin, who passed away last week, and we're going to celebrate her, her wonderful, rich, and 
colorful life on Friday, a ceremony on Friday for her funeral. I'm going to pray for Sienna, the J and Debbie Noble's four-year-old granddaughter who uh, has in Syria who needs some serious prayers because of some um, some issues with uh, uh, with her with her with her health. So, pray. Let's pray all hard. So for she's four years old. So all the young people. Pray for her, okay? All, all the young people especially. Is there any four-year-olds here? Are there any four-year-olds here? Okay, so if we pray. Almost four, okay. Oh, yay! <laughs> so let's take a moment to center our hearts. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were sent to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us finally to the gift of everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Be, by your help we beseech you, O Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son Jesus handed himself over for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be attentive to God's holy word. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> From the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. 
Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whenever you ask of, whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of a blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave. And a stone lay across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyebrows and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand, hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to him, you not untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come, to Mary, uh, had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The gospel of the Lord. Jesus wept. What can paint a more human picture of Jesus than thinking of him weeping with his close friends, Mary and Martha, over the death of his friend and their brother, Lazarus? Mary and Martha, to some degree, felt betrayed by Jesus. Their deep faith knew that Jesus could heal Lazarus. 
But Jesus was too late. They felt he had let them down. In fact, after four days in the tomb, Mary and Martha were sure that there would be an untenable smell of, the fat of death. Jesus felt their pain and loss. Jesus' humanity is palpable as he shares their pain. Lazarus was dead for four days. Jesus was dead for three. According to the Talmud, Jesus, uh, Jewish, Talmud Jewish uh, burial practices require someone to be dead for three full days before they are buried. The Jewish tradition believed that a person's spirit remained with their, their dead body for three days. Jesus' humanity quickly turns to his divinity, though, as he confidently commands Lazarus to come out of the cave. This miracle is considered different from Jesus' other miracles. It's Jesus alone doing this miracle. Past miracles required faith or cooperation of the others involved. And this time, this miracle is simply Jesus in charge from start to finish. Mary and Martha told Jesus he was too late. Four days meant Lazarus was dead. He hadn't come in time. But Jesus told them, this sickness is not to result in death. It may have been too late for Mary and Martha, but Jesus let them know it's never too late for God. We often think that if God doesn't answer our prayers immediately, then the answer is no. Jesus answered Mary and Martha's prayers for life in a bigger and a better way. A blessing that could only be answered in prayer, uh, answered as a prayer from God. A miracle. Maybe like Martha and Mary, you've asked Jesus to help you. And you're sure the answer was no. Jesus won't always answer when or how we expect, but that doesn't mean our requests are unheard. Jesus will find a way to use even the most painful situations to bring glory to God in ways unexpected and perhaps even more generous than we ask. It's no mistake that today's gospel, a story of resurrection, comes during Lent as we prepare for Easter. Soon we will see Jesus' humanity. He'll bleed from being whipped, he'll bleed from the thorns in his head, and he'll weep from the agony, and he will die. What is more human than dying? Jesus will then show his divinity by rising from the dead, his feet and hands will have the holes of the human torture, but his body will glow with divinity. Today's gospel tells us that we, like Lazarus, get to share in his resurrection. We too get the share of Jesus' divinity. Maybe you're like Martha and Mary, brothers, uh, Mary's brother Lazarus, and you feel as though life has gone out of you, or perhaps that life has passed you by. Maybe you're feeling soulless, and wrapped up in things that won't let you go. Our humanity requires us to suffer, not always knowing or understanding the purpose or the timing. Today tells us that Jesus suffered our humanity, which we share in, share in his divinity in everlasting life. Before Jesus came along, death was the grim reaper, the all-powerful terminator come to extinguish us all. Jesus changes all of that. Death is not the dreaded conclusion to a meaningless existence. Our life is not meaningless. Our suffering is not meaningless. Our fate is not extinction. Death is a beginning, not an end. It's our passage to a life that will never end. Death came into the world through sin. It was conquered by the humble, sinless Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. I have a poem.
loud voice. <laughs> For the church and all of our leaders, hear the gospel Jesus. He isn't like Lazarus to nourish your relationship. Lord. Let's try this one. We pray for Sienna in a special way, Jay and Debbie Noble's granddaughter, who's four years old. We pray for my good friend, Father George Rieger, who's quite ill in the hospital. For all those in nursing homes and rehab, for all those who have surgery this week, for their nurses and doctors and caretakers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our First Communion class, who brightens up our sunny morning already. It's bright, but you've made it even brighter. So we pray in thanksgiving for your parents and your families and your teachers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the departed, for Mary and Arthur Delman, for whom we offer Mass, and for Esther Munjan, who passed away, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For generosity to the Catholic Charities Appeal and all, the agent, all that the agency does so well, and especially that our community continues to show forth our charity and love for the needy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Anybody else has prayers? Sing it out. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the two children that are being baptized, one yesterday, one today, uh, that the great light of baptism will shine forever in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Thanksgiving for God's gifts today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear us always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The gifts will be brought up by Claire, Noah, I mean, I'm sorry, Nora, and Stella. So Claire, Nora, and Stella. And then also collection will be done by Ryan, William, Sydney, Luke, and Lillianne. Please join in singing. Lilliana. Sorry. Didn't see the A in the end. Sorry, sorry. Please join in singing Precious Lord, Take My Hand, number 955 in your books, number 955. Precious Lord, take my hand. Acceptable to God, the Almighty. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and help as we pray join us, we pray, so that with Mary,
Let us offer each other a sign in prayer for peace. Peace, Father. As we come to the altar for communion, please join in singing hymn number 783, Unless a Grain of Wheat, number 783 in your books.
Thank you, Becky. Our Holy Week and Easter schedule is as follows. There'll be normal masses next weekend for Palm Sunday with the children's mass at 1030. At 7 o'clock, there'll be a service for Holy Thursday, which is April 6th. Noon, Stations of the Cross, and 3 p.m. service for Good Friday, April 7th. There'll be an 8 p.m. Mass on Easter Vigil, not our normal 530, on Holy Saturday, April 8th. 6.44 in the morning, our Sunrise Mass, and also 9 and 10.30 for Easter Sunday, April 9th. After the Sunrise Mass, join us for a community breakfast. There'll be scrambled eggs, sausage, rolls, coffee, tea, and juice. We're asking those attending to please bring a dish to share. See the flyers for suggestions, and dishes can be dropped off before or after Mass. Father Roy invites everyone to pray the Stations of the Cross with him one last time this Friday. Stations are at 6.30 p.m. in the chapel. On Saturday, April 8th, the Easter Bunny will visit the Newman Center as we have a family Easter egg hunt. Thank you everyone for your donations of eggs and candy. Please contact Katie if you can help stuff or hide eggs. This summer, the Buffalo House of Hope, a home for asylum seekers, refugees, and immigrants will open. Please see the newsletter or one of the flyers by the doors for details about how you can help launch this outreach project. Please contact Eileen if you're able to sponsor a homeless child from the Buffalo area. Additionally, we are in need of food and clothing to support our ministry to them. Your help is greatly appreciated. The Cover Girls Book Club is excited to announce the local author, Lisa Redmond, will speak at the Newman Center on Monday, April 24th at 7. The book club will be reading Redmond's The Full Cold Moon for April. All are invited to meet Lisa. <coughs> thank you, thank you to everyone who's given to the 2023 Catholic Charities Campaign. If you have yet to donate, please return your pledge card directly to Catholic Charities or by dropping it in the basket here at the Newman Center. You can also pick up a pledge card at the door and return it here or send it in to Catholic Charities. Or you can contribute through the website ccwny.org. If you contribute, please use our parish code, which is 0768. And thank you again for all that you do to help the least of these. And there's more. Join us this week on Wednesday for roast chicken, corn, sweet potatoes, salad, and homemade desserts. Hang around after the next episode of The Chosen in the Student Lounge at 6.45 p.m. This Thursday, we have a new time for our Emmaus Reflection Group. We'll now meet at 3. Keep an eye on our Instagram for the location. We will also be hosting a trivia night this Thursday night at 7. Join us for some fun competition and snacks. On Saturday, we'll be adventuring downtown for mass and confession at St. Michael's. Then we'll go explore a local coffee shop. If you need a ride, we'll leave Newman at 11 a.m. Otherwise, we'll see you at St. Michael's at 1130. The next UB Rooted Women's Group will be on April 3rd. Details next week. Uh, we have also uh, on for, for uh, the Easter Vigil, we have three people becoming, uh, three adults becoming Catholics and being baptized. So um, it's an exciting event for everybody if you want to come and see that. We're all welcome to see that. Also, I just want to read the last stanza of this poem. It's always on. <coughs> The poem by Brother Augustine, late of Niagara University, a very good friend. So the poem is called Lazarus Afterward. There are four stanzas. I'm going to read the last stanza because everybody wants to get going for the game. What time does the game start? Who do we play, Miami today? 
Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Jeez, lighten up, will you? <laughs> now, this is Lazarus afterwards. Now he waits to return to the place he had only been for hours, remembering the deep sleep, waking to smell the damp walls again and the spider web of gauze falling from around his face and limbs, the touch, the single command, his friend's face, and then the clear befuddlement of knowing where he had been and what had happened. But that is only sometimes. Otherwise, there is the yard, some bread making, a glass of wine, and watching the dog. What was there to do after all, afterwards? Wow. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Very nice. Brother Augustine. <laughs> when I when I was a seminarian, we we were that was back in the '60s, and uh, and you know we were very formal about confession and things like that. And the spiritual director of the seminary was a priest called Benedict Ballou. I think he was deaf too, but the best time was to go, if you wanted to go to confession, we all had spiritual directors, we were supposed to go to them, but if you wanted to go at another time, the best time to go, he was a Franciscan, so he was a great fan of St. Bonaventure, the, the, <laughs> the best time was to go was during a basketball game on, on, on a Saturday afternoon, when he, when he said, Father, I'd like to go to confession, okay, I was watching the game, I'll just turn the sound down. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. May God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing Change Our Hearts, number 493, in your books, number 493. Change.